Yo, what's good E7 fam? Pat here back with another how to play video guide and in this one we're going to be talking about, in my opinion, one of the coolest looking characters in the entire game, Operator Cigarette. As with all of the how to play guides here on my channel, I'll be going super in depth and covering almost everything you could want to know about the character, including things like stats, skills, possible end game equipment builds for you to try out, and PvP knowledge if that's your thing. So, with our fancy introduction out of the way, Let's talk about Operator Segret's stats. Operator Segret is a Dark Ranger of the Libra Zodiac symbol. Her stat line is unique to her. Taking a look at her stat line, she has 1,079 attack, 5,502 health, 115 speed, 564 defense, 27% critical hit chance, 160% critical hit damage, 5% dual attack chance, and no effectiveness or effect resistance. This translates to above average starting speed, starting critical hit chance, and starting critical hit damage. However, for a damage dealer, Operator Segret's attack is lacking, and her health and defense are lower than most other 5-star heroes in Epic 7. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section in the English dub of Epic 7, Segret as well as Operator Segret are voiced by Sally Safiotti, who you can hear as Leon S. Kennedy's main point of contact Hunnigan in the Resident Evil franchise, Hilda in Fire Emblem Three Houses as well as the various different offshoots, and Mistral in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Segret as well as Operator Segret are voiced by Kaida Yuko, who you can hear as Ryomu Shime from Ikitosen, Isabella from The Promised Neverland, and Twilight's main point of contact from the organization Wise, Sylvia Sherwood from Spy Family. Operator Segret's S1 is Incision. It has a 1x attack multiplier, which is pretty much as average as it gets. Additionally, this move heals the ally on your team with the lowest amount of health for a value that is proportional to Operator Segret's attack. That value I was not able to find in any of the data mines, so I had to do it myself. And from all of my testing, it appears that the amount that you heal off of incision is roughly equal to 30% of Operator Segret's attack. Operator Segret's S2 is her signature skill, Annihilation. You acquired two souls upon use, and it has a four turn cooldown. This move has a 0.75x attack multiplier, as well as a 0.075% speed multiplier. This move penetrates the target's defense by 50% or by 100% if the target has a barrier. Additionally, if this move kills an enemy, Operator Segret gets an extra turn. So I said it was the signature skill and I truly do mean it. Annihilation basically defines Operator Segret's entire purpose, largely due in part to this move's multipliers. Let me explain. As a 50% defense penetration move, this one has a lower multiplier than most other ones that we've talked about here on this channel, and it's on a character that has significantly less attack than most of those characters. This means for Operator Segret to do her job, she needs all the help that she can get when it comes to damage. The most obvious way to get damage would be to get that extra 50% defense penetration from targeting a unit with a barrier. Sometimes though, that's still not going to be enough. There's a good chance that you're going to need very good gear or some form of attack buff or both if you want to guarantee that this character can actually execute somebody with Annihilation. And then we come to the speed multipliers. You see, this move used to have only an attack multiplier, but at some point the devs decided to lower the damage multiplier to give it a speed multiplier equal to that of Green Vildreds. Since Operator Segret is already desperate for damage, the speed multiplier pretty much shoehorns her into a speedy glass cannon DPS. She really doesn't have any other build options. Not that I'm going to be complaining too much because the results that she does get on that build are fantastic. She's honestly an amazing counterpick against a lot of the best characters in Epic 7 simply because of the threat that Annihilation poses. It kills a character and then grants her an extra turn and that is going to allow her a free follow up with her S3 
obliterate. Operator Cigarettes S3 is, as we just mentioned, obliterate. You acquire three souls upon use and it has a four to five turn cooldown, depending on Mulligora. It is an AoE attack with a 1x multiplier. It also has a 0.1125% speed multiplier. There is a 75 to 100% chance for this move to decrease all buff durations on all enemies by one turn, as well as decreasing those enemies' combat readiness by 20%. It then grants Operator Cigarette as well as all other allies an attack buff for two turns. This skill ignores effect resistance if it is hitting an enemy with a barrier. Honestly, Obliterate is fantastic as an S3. It does almost everything that you could want in an opening skill in Epic 7. It buffs your team, removes buffs from your opponent's team, and it gives you kind of like a pseudo burst of speed by pushing back the enemy's team. This makes it an excellent follow-up skill after executing a target from Annihilation, as it lets you keep your momentum going and allow it to translate into a game win. The speed multiplier here pretty much reinforces that sentiment we had with Annihilation as well. You're going to be playing Operator Cigarette either for her ability to delete a single target that has a barrier and then ride that momentum into a game win, or you're just going to probably play her as fast as possible and ride the advantage that you get out of Obliterate when playing Operator Cigarette as an opener. Either way, regardless of how you decide to play her, both options are going to favor speed and a whole heck of a lot of damage. Operator Cigarette Soulburn extends the duration of buffs granted to her team by one turn when using her S3 for the cost of 10 souls. It's honestly a really bad Soulburn when you consider most of the other Soulburns that are in this game. It doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. You're usually winning the game by the time you're using Obliterate, you're either, again, riding it for momentum to win off of a cleave composition, or you've already done most of the damage with just her S2, and you're just happy to push back the enemy team with the S3 as a follow-up. Again, yeah, really poor use of souls. The only real reason to use it is if you just desperately need to have that attack buff up on your team as long as possible, and you just don't have anything better to use it on. When it comes to Mulligora priorities, you're going to probably want to max S2 and S3 pretty much equally depending on how you're trying to play Operator Cigarette. If you are using her for that Assassin build that we're going to talk about in the next section, you're going to want to max Annihilation first because the move hits like a wet noodle and you need as much damage on it as you can get. And the S3 obviously has a lot of value in investing it because of not only the pushback chance, but the decreased cooldown and then also the damage, which pretty much every version of Operator Cigarette is going to need damage on this move. So which one of these you max first, I leave it up to you. Ideally, you'd want a plus 15 this character because she is a damage dealer, although most of the time you are winning the game off of just the S2 or the S3, so you don't ever really get to use the S1. She's either won the game for you or she's dead by that point, so I leave it to you to decide whether or not you should actually get Incision. I personally plus 15 my damage dealers because there are some niche scenarios where like she gets revived off of an Apocalypse Ravi in a very long game where that incision damage might end up mattering. But again, I leave that decision to you. In the skill section, we talked about Annihilation and Obliterate at length and how those two skills pretty much define the playstyle of the character. The two builds I'm going to talk about in this video are centralized around those two abilities, one around Annihilation, the other around Obliterate. For 95 to 99% of you watching this video, the Annihilation build is what you're probably going to want to play because Annihilation is an incredibly potent skill and makes Operator Cigret one of the best counter pick units units in the entire game. It's also the easiest one to use effectively. So that's why I think it's a pretty good starting point. 
When we take a look at the primary sets, I'm going to be on a speed set with a critical hit chance offset. Although you could play immunity if you so choose. If you have just really insane gear and a lot of imprints, you could go again immunity. I just think for a character as stat hungry as Operator Cigret, you would absolutely want to go for a critical hit chance offset just to, again, bolster those stats, get as much stats as possible. And before someone actually asks the question, why no penetration set? It's because Annihilation has 100% defense pen the penetration set doesn't actually do anything on this character looking at the desired stats I have 3,300 attack this is where I think a lot of people average on operator cigarette with their builds I've seen as low as like 3,100 I have seen as high as like 3,700 I personally play in the 35s if I could I would you know, prefer to recommend 3,500, but I recognize that's not obtainable by everybody who watches my videos. The highest attack that you can get without sacrificing too much crit chance, crit damage, or speed is the number that you should go with. Just try to shoot for 3,300 as a base. For defense, I have 874. This is Operator Cigarette's base defense with an I-90 body. For health, I have 8,337. This is, again, Operator Cigarette's base health with an I-90 helmet. It will obviously be higher once you equip your artifact of choice. I just didn't want to give a specific health total that involves that artifact because there are a number of different options you can play on Operator Cigarette, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. For speed, I have 230. Realistically, 240 is where you really want to be uh, most of the time. If you are a person who plays in the champion, emperor, or legend rating, you're really going to want to go for like 250 or higher if you can get it for sure. 230 is probably the lowest that I would go on the character. In this current meta, in the past, about 200 speed was fine, but there are just too many fast threats right now to really play a slower operator cigarette. If you are in a bracket that doesn't really play against a lot of speed characters, or you just want operator cigarette for, say, Guild War offense, and you're not really bringing her into fast compositions, you could go again as low as like 200 if you so choose. But for most people, 230 to 240 is where you really should be with your speed thresholds. Critical hit chance, 100%. We are really all inning on that S2 annihilation. So if we miss the crit and fail to get the kill, we got no value out of our operator cigarette. So there's no real reason for us to not get 100% critical hit chance. I wouldn't fault you too much for going for 99, but again, this is one of those characters where like missing a crit is just cost you the game. One crit miss is pretty much all it takes. For critical hit damage, I have 280%. I have seen around 270 before as a lower threshold. I have seen 310 or so for the higher thresholds. I am roughly around 300%. Again, it is going to be according to your gear and your level of play. With 3300 attack, 230-ish speed, and 280 crit damage, you should be able to do around 23 to 24K damage with Annihilation to a shielded target without an attack buff. So that's not gonna kill a tank, obviously, but that should kill most threats, most damage dealers in the game that you are coming up against. So that's a good benchmark. Use it to gauge where you are, uh, whether that's higher or lower. I highly recommend looking at a damage calculator where I ballparked it for most people is again around 24k is where I shot with these stat lines for the damage because all it takes at that point is like one attack buff uh, to basically give you the kill shot for Operator Cigarette for most players. Looking at the right side gear here, I have a crit damage necklace and an attack percentage ring because we really, again, need to hit as hard as possible on Annihilation. If you remember from the previous section, it has really terrible multipliers, so any amount of damage that we can get in the form of crit damage, attack, or speed is huge. Same with the boots here. Speed so that we can take our turn in a timely fashion and also get bonus damage on her S2 as well as her S3. For the artifact, I have a symbol of unity listed here because everyone has access to it. However, I actually think of the four artifacts listed here, it is the worst option that you can choose. I personally believe Guiding Light is the best option on this character because it provides you some level of safety in certain scenarios. Basically, it kind of lets you have a guaranteed turn with Operator Cigarette, assuming that you are not picking her into fast openers like your Conquerlosses, your Peras, your Rans. 
but I'm assuming if you are picking Operator Segret, it is to deal with barriers. Traditionally, barrier characters are not really that fast, save for maybe Hua Young, and then Guiding Light will really save your bacon and make sure that you don't actually get one shot by Hua Young. The reason I can't recommend Guiding Light as the de facto best choice here is for two reasons. One, limited artifacts, so not everyone has access to it. Two, it doesn't give you any bonus damage, which means you need a plus 31 to really get the most amount of stats out of the artifact, and you really need good gear again to use that Guiding Light. You are basically going without damage for the purposes of gaining protection and ensuring that Operator Segret can do her job and actually get to her first turn. Very, very difficult to do. For people who are a little bit more comfortable in making sure that their Operator Segret can get to a timely uh, first turn, whether that's through some kind of mitigation of your own, some kind of openers or stunners to secure the way so that she'll make it to her first turn. You can choose something like Portrait of the Saviors, which is actually the most common build that I see a lot of people play. It really helps out with the damage. If you have like that 3100 attack Operator Segret that I talked about, Portrait will do wonders for you. It will really help give her that big boost of damage that she so desperately needs to ensure a kill. And the other one I have listed here is Wall of Order. That is Landy's limited artifact, uh, as people usually refer to it, Wall of Copium, because if you proc the greater attack buff on Operator Segret, there's pretty much nothing you can't kill, even if you have very subpar stats on the character. So I leave it to you to decide which one you want. Personally, Guiding Light, I think is the best option, but it's only really accessible for longtime players and players with lots of resources at their disposal. For everyone else, Portrait, I think is probably your next best option, Wall of Order, if you're feeling lucky or you just need something to help really boost up the character because you don't have the gear. And then lastly, a symbol of unity because, again, everyone has access to it and it's not limited like all three other options that I recommended. Looking at the per piece average, I have 17% attack, 9 speed, 10% crit chance, and 10% crit damage per piece. The second build that we're going to be talking about in this video is a more S3 centric build. It's essentially a bootleg closer Charles build when you think about it at the end of the day. Operator Segret's S3 Obliterate is a fairly good skill on paper for an opener. However, Operator Segret is not that fast when you compare her to characters like Conqueror Lilius, Ran, or Peyra. So, she's really not up to the task. So you usually are going to be picking her in the fourth or fifth slot like you do with Closer Charles, where you know that like 275 or 280 is probably realistically going to take the first turn. That's when you'd want to employ a build like the one that we're going to talk about. So taking a look at the primary sets, I am on a speed set with a critical hit chance offset. The offsets, I still have immunity there if you want it, but it's even worse here than it was with the first build. And the other one that I have here is hit if you actually value having some effectiveness to guarantee the combat readiness pushback. If you do, I would highly caution you not to go super overboard because you don't want to lose too much damage. Looking at the desired stats, I have 2,578 attack. This is Operator Segret's attack with an I-90 attack percentage ring as well as an I-90 sword. Obviously, you can and should put more attack on the character if you so choose. I'm not going to give a rough ballpark. It's just as much as you can get because speed is the most important thing for this actual build. Defense and health, straight glass cannon character, still base values with I-90 helmets and bodies. Speed, I have 270. I have seen 280, even like 290 before in the past. Again, it depends on what you are trying to sacrifice to get that speed. Critical hit chance, I still have it 100% so that, that way I can do some amount of damage. You can actually choose a critical hit chance necklace on this character and have less critical hit damage than I'm recommending, which is 230%. That is essentially just your base critical hit damage with an I-90 critical hit damage necklace. If, again, you want to do more damage, you are welcome to do so. It just, this build, speed really is king. You need to make sure that she has turn one locked up for sure. And again, that same way that you would expect out of a faster closer Charles or like a faster Angel of Light Angelica. You're essentially trying to just 
you know, get all that momentum right away with the S3. Looking at the effectiveness, I have 0%, but I would not fault you for playing like a hit set with like maybe 30 to 50% extra, anywhere between like 30 to 70% effectiveness if you really just want that pushback. But I feel like you're probably gonna be giving up too much damage to do it. I have, again, seen effectiveness builds that have like 50 to 70 effectiveness and no actual critical hit damage, but still have some critical hit chance. That is a possibility for you. Again, I value the damage, but you might value the pushback. So I wanted to give the, uh, the option and the flexibility. Looking at the right side, I am on a crit damage necklace. Although you can play any necklace, you can play critical hit chance necklace to obviously get that 100% critical hit chance, or you could just play any necklace that you have that will allow you to hit the speed thresholds. Like if you just really want that fast operator cigarette, that like 280, 290 speed operator cigarette build, and you have like a flat defense necklace that'll make it happen, then by all means you can go for it. Just know that she's not gonna be a damage dealer at that point, and she's just purely a setup and your other three characters have to carry. For ring, I have attack percentage because I still think you should put as much damage on the character as you possibly could. But again, if you wanted to, you could go for like an effectiveness ring to guarantee the pushback or again, any other ring, as long as you are just shooting for speed and don't really care about the damage on the character. Boots is speed because again, trying to take turn one. For artifact, I'm choosing guiding light this time because I value the stealth. We don't need the stats as badly as we do in the first build. So a plus 15 guiding light is probably a-okay. You're probably taking the first turn no matter what with the build like this, if you're picking her correctly. But if for some reason you don't, having the stealth to fall back on and guarantee a turn to obliterate might not be so bad at the end of the day. If you just don't want to play Guiding Light and you're just really looking to play as aggressively as possible, you can still choose a Symbol of Unity, Portrait, or Wall of Water like we talked about last time. Looking at the per piece average, we have 10% critical hit chance and 17 speed average per piece, which I realize is a lot for most of you watching this video. And that's why, again, I highly recommend the first build for most people watching this video. This is largely a like cleave players, like high-end build for Operator Sigrep. After that, Focus the rest of your pieces on either attack percentage, crit damage percentage, or a little bit of effectiveness, again, if you really do value that combat readiness pushback on the S3. When it comes to teammates for Operator Sigret, she's looking for two things in particular. One, something that helps increase her damage, and two, some way to take her first turn safely. For most standard players in this metagame, Conqueror Lilius and Amelia are going to be your best options. Both are exceptional at opening, both provide some form of attack buff for Operator Sigret, and both have ways of guaranteeing that Sigret gets her first turn. Conqueror Lilius in the form of her Reverse Provoke, and Amelia in the form of her Combat Readiness on her S2. For more cleave-oriented players, Flan and Closer Charles are good options for you. Flan is basically a cleave mainstay with her CR pushing, her attack buffs, and her critical hit damage buffs. And Closer Charles is basically the best in the business when it comes to a pivot cleave unit. In fact, if you're on that obliterate build that we talked about in this video, you can pick Operator Segret and Closer Charles together in a cleave pivot, and you can't really be banned out because they basically both do the same exact job. The last character to highlight here is Desert Jewel Basar. He, since his barrier inversion buff, is an amazing choice against characters like Fallen Cecilia or any other barrier heavy team. So when you see a lot of barriers, you can choose Operator Segret and Desert Jewel Basar and know that you will punish your opponent very hard. When it comes to good matchups, the first thing that should come to your mind is barriers. Annihilation as well as Obliterate absolutely destroy teams that have a lot of barriers on them. The number one character that you should be looking to pick Operator Segret against is Fallen Cecilia. She is one of the game's premier damage mitigation sources, and that's because she gives a barrier to her entire team and a barrier to a hero at the end of each of her turns. An attack buff Operator Segret pretty much has free reign to kill anyone on Fallen Cecilia's team, making it an absolutely nightmarish matchup for your opponent. Hua Young is another very good matchup for Operator Segret. She starts the battle with a barrier, and she gets one at the end of each of her turns, which means Annihilation is pretty much primed and ready to go to kill her at any point in the battle of your choosing, as long as you have enough attack. Considering how prevalent Hua Young is in the meta, it's why I think it's worth it for veteran players to pick up an Operator Segret with her rerun. It's just, again, a very, very good answer to Hua Young, not only in 
Guild Wars, but also World Arena as well. The last two characters I want to talk about in this section are Mediator Quirk as well as Adventure Raz. There are times where your opponent might end up having a barrier that they otherwise shouldn't. And in those scenarios, if you have Operator Segret on the team, it would be pretty nice. For example, if you have the second build Operator Segret and you're just playing her kind of as like a speedy opener and your opponent just kind of forgets that you have Operator Segret and uses Mediator Quirks S2, that gives a barrier, which can in turn allow you to kind of snowball a game out of control. And Adventure Raz, his new buff makes it so that the backline character, which is usually a hard carry, by the way, or a squishier DPS, gets a barrier after they've taken a certain amount of single target damage. If you're able to proc that barrier and you haven't used Annihilation yet on Operator Segret, it's pretty much a free kill for you. Again, I wouldn't go out of my way to play Operator Segret against these kinds of characters, but it's really important that you're aware of characters that can provide barriers or characters that can be wearing artifacts that can potentially provide a barrier like say Bastion of Perlusia. To round out the video, let's talk about bad matchups for Operator Segret. I wanna start with Pavel as well as Conqueror Lilius. These are not two specific characters so much as they are indicative of playstyles you want to avoid playing Operator Segret into. That's essentially Speed contesters, characters that are for sure going to be faster than your Operator Segret. Pavel usually means that your opponent is playing a very fast and very aggressive composition and is most likely trying to take turn one from you at all costs. If Operator Segret cannot actually get to her first turn safely, she has no value. Conqueror Lilius is a very similar story. Very powerful opener, and she can also remove the stealth from Guiding Light on your character and potentially provoke Locker, or even worse, set up a kill from one of her teammates so that that way you get no value out of your Operator Segret. Other characters that I want to highlight that are very similar in principle, they kind of highlight concepts that you want to avoid playing Operator Segret into. Green Violet is the first one. If your opponent dodges your Annihilation off of the start of the battle, that means you got no value out of your Operator Segret, and therefore she's most likely a wasted pick. So really not a good time to be picking her into dodge units. Dien is another character that may seem like one that you'd want to pick Operator Segret into because she does provide a lot of barriers, but she also provides critical hit resistance. Essentially, your Annihilation turns into a 50-50 coin flip if you're trying to go for this at the start of a battle, which means you probably should err on the side of caution and go for Obliterate first in this matchup to guarantee that they do not have critical hit resist before you actually go for an Annihilation kill on a barrier if they still have it after all is said and done. So this one's a little bit dicey. Again, based on how things go, it could be good or it could be bad, but in my experience, it usually doesn't work out, so I really just don't even try to go for it anymore. And the last one I wanna talk about here is Troublemaker Crozet, who represents a lot of damage share potential. Essentially, we already talked about how Annihilation doesn't have the best damage multipliers, and you do need a lot of damage buffs in order to kill the target. Well, Imagine having to deal an extra like 40% damage because of all that damage share that Troublemaker Crozet has. So yeah, just the ceiling for the amount of damage you need to kill the target is a lot higher when Troublemaker Crozet is involved or say an artifact such as Arius. And that's going to do it for how to play Operator Segret. As always, if I missed anything, let me know down in the comment section below. If you want to see more how to play video guides in this same style, there should be a playlist on your screen now. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye now.